Hello. Do you have all of the answers to life? Do you feel like you have a knowing? Do you feel like you know the secret or the secrets? Or you've figured out your way of going through this life with some level of satisfaction and even happiness? I'm really wondering. <laughs> Comment below. Um, I feel like the more years you live, the more questions there are, but also the more tools you learn to help get through existence. But then ironically, you're also getting closer to the end of it. I, um, I just read a really good book called Never Let Me Go by, I'm going to butcher his name, but Kazao Ig something, I-G. I looked like it's going to be in this room. It's not. It's very good, and I recommend it. Um, I have some things I want to say about it, but I also don't want to spoil, and I feel like I'd be spoiling if I'd be talking about it. So, um, I just, I love any books or pieces of art that make you feel more alive by either seeing people, like, so close to death or, like, in a state of just kind of existentialism. And it feels, um, it connects deeply and like reminds me what I wanna do when I live and how I wanna exist. Um, a question I've asked, I don't remember if I've talked about this, but I feel like it's interesting to ask yourself if you had one week to live what you would do with that week and how you would spend your time. Of course, we have to deal with the stressors of life and just the managing of bills and exist, you know, just the daily chores. You got to do those, just maintenance, because otherwise it could pile up. But that aside, finding pieces of joy and glimmers of um, what you want to do to have some sort of control over your, your life. If you think back to those feelings of when you're like a toddler and you have no control and you can't do the things you want to, even physically, you're, you can't use the scissors the way you, you envision this craft going a certain way and it doesn't come out the way it, it could and how you envision it. I know that's, that's somewhat, um, an experience kids have, and also maybe on a next level, if you're perfectionistic, it can be more extreme. And now, of course, there are still things that aren't going to come out how we want them to. Um, even as I'm talking, I feel like things, I'm, I'm not able to articulate things as well as I'd like to. Although I will say, I am articulating my thoughts much clearer than I once was able to. And that comes with practice and uh, also bravery to be able to practice out loud and mess up and fail and then continue on. And I suppose going back to the toddlerhood, um, there are certain things we can control now and then we forget it. It's funny, my um, my Franco was talking about how when he was a kid, he wanted a DeLorean car. And now he's an adult. He can't afford a DeLorean. But there are so many things we envision when we're little and that we dream of. And then when you're older, you just, you know, get a boring old SUV or you just do the thing that you're supposed to do. And that childlike spirit, desire, and wonder, you don't listen to as much or maybe don't have access to as much. And I guess um, I think it's important to have access to it or to unlock it or find it. And one way, I mentioned this before and it, it can sound, um, I don't know, whatever it sounds. Here it is, gratitude. It's actually practicing gratitude and really feeling that 
whether it's a journal, saying it out loud. I find writing it helps. I haven't done it in a while, so I'm a hypocrite. But I, I have been trying to voice it, especially in the people in my life that I care about. Self-compassion and radical acceptance is going well right now, currently. It's, that is the antidote to perfectionism, I learned through therapy and other tools. Um, so I've been trying to talk to my inner child, and it also helps having a child because I practice these scripts and I say them to him and then I'm able to say them to me, and of course I'm not going to be perfect. Um, that's the whole point. <laughs> so I've been kind of like, they're there, like literally comical. Like if, if you got footage of these moments when I'm, like I had a grocery shopping trip, I struggle with shopping, uh, decision making and certain things like that. And then knowing that I'm struggling and the accepting the way I am and also like getting through it and um, not adding to the struggle by saying, why are you like this? Why are you struggling? This shouldn't be so hard. Everyone else is able to just zip, zip, pick a mayonnaise and go. What's wrong with you? That sort of narrative is the is is not compassionate. And so I'm catching myself in those moments and um, being more tender and loving toward me. And I'm sharing this so maybe you can um, implement this into your life uh, like even talking out loud and saying like you you just went on a shopping trip and you got the things and you did the things and they're there I don't know whatever whatever you need to hear I feel like at first it can be hard to know what you need to hear but it's like the opposite of negative self-talk and like kind of just like this loving little mother to your child inside of you and it can be um silly at first or feel silly and even that I embrace and I might laugh and then be laughing by myself and look quite ridiculous but those moments are important um I think to building and reestablishing a relationship with yourself where you're accepting where you're at and how you're coping <clears throat> however that is um, also, being able to embrace the joys of life, like I was saying earlier, finding those things that you do in that week if you were going to die, and doing them more, um, even if a little bit. It's interesting, when I've asked this question to my friends, something that comes up for everyone is outside, um, something outside. I think one of mine was like, now I can't remember, but like going in the water or laying in the grass or like certain things that I never do. Being in touch with nature, I think is a natural, natural part of being an animal. And it's very grounding and it's easy to forget to be out there, especially when it's freaking cold or freaking hot or whatever. But finding time to be in nature, um, away from all these zzz, zzz, technology rays. <laughs> That's not the word I'm looking for, but it's enough and I'm going to move forward. See, that that's the type of thing I can get hung up on finding the right word or the right thing. And instead, just embracing the imperfection, finishing the sentence and moving forward is something that I'm practicing. So, um, I've also been off social media. I haven't been posting as much here. Sorry about that. Even though you're all fine. You don't need me. You just, you got you. Um, but being on social media can, I it's there's a notable level of anxiety that shifts when I'm on it versus when I'm off it. Right now I'm back on, releasing a song, then I'll get off it. But I know some people are able to manage their life on social media more and it doesn't get to them as much. But finding the things that get to you and the things that bring you joy and finding some sort of balance. But doing things for you and then, and doing things for later you too. Like that can sometimes take some executive functioning skill. But like thinking of tomorrow Molly. Like tomorrow Molly doesn't want to have to pour 
my son's milk and get it all ready and blah, blah, blah. Like, she's going to be tired and doing that for her later. Like, it's like acts of service for yourself. <laughs> it's like the love languages, but to you. Because you deserve it. Like, doing things, like, you know, I'm doing this, like, I just got an ice cream cone at McDonald's. Um, I grew up, you don't need to know how I grew up. <laughs> I just cut you off from sharing. Let me share it. Nah. Nah, sure, I'll share. Okay. I grew up not always getting what I wanted, which is a useful skill. You're not always going to get what you want. But to the point where, I don't know how much of it is nature versus nurture, maybe a bit of both, I'm sure. But I have trouble treating myself. So when I treat myself, it's a big deal. I know some people are on the other side of the spectrum. And then this brings us back to like balance. So if you're overindulging and you need some responsibility in your life. Like it's funny because we talk about growth in, in, through the lens of what growing looks like to us as an individual. But everyone has their own experience and what they need to work on. And sometimes it's good to reflect. I know that talking about self too much can be, ugh, you know, much, especially because there's so much else. It's more about like how we're all united and eh. sometimes I think it's good though. You know, it's our lives after all and we only have so much time to spend on it. Also, I think it's just in general good to be a good person. Like, how do you want to, do you want to die and be that person that everyone thought was like a jerk like a manipulative prick or whatever I don't think so I think being kind to people in your life really makes much more of a difference and if you don't have a lot of people in your life even just being kind to yourself um and your pets and your plants even Ugh, I say that but I'm not so good at feeding my plants I don't know how that orchid's still alive. <laughs>